Hello again, everybody. I um, want to come to you real quick and talk to you about, um, I have a few more stories I want to tell you about, but one of them is about my best friend when I was growing up, a guy that um, that I did so many crazy things with. But, you know, where I grew up, we, we did everything outdoors. I mean, we didn't have, I mean, we were we just didn't have the money for video games even though that did exist Atari and this kind of stuff had had these things that, and I had um, I had um, some experience with it by seeing it but I never really got into them and even today I don't really get into it I mean just a real quick current story I bought my son and my daughter a long time ago and I have it right here in, in the house with me I got them a Nintendo GameCube and um they were a little bit too young to play it, probably, so I was playing it a little bit and playing Zelda. And man, after two weeks of playing that, I really got really good at it. And then um, <laughs> my son took the uh, cartridge out of it and and lost it, so I didn't play it anymore. But um, getting back to my story, um, I grew up where I grew up at. We really did a lot of outdoor stuff. I mean, I hunted and we trapped and we fished. And, um, you know, if my mom wanted some fish to eat for the weekend, she'd say, hey, just go get some fish. And, man, just, we scattered. Look, we're fishing. You know, we'd get up at 530 in the morning to go fishing, you know. And um, so, but when I was in, uh, I grew up in, I, I went to a little small, t um, I went to elementary school in a place called, when we moved back from my dad. We moved back to Louisiana when my dad was in the Army. But I went and uh, then uh, I went to a school called Colfax Elementary School in Colfax, Louisiana, and um, I believe I started off in the sixth, and I went to sixth, seventh, and eighth grade there. And um, sadly, um, you know, we weren't segregated by color; we were segregated by class. You know, um, if your parents were were um, influential and had money, then your kids were in the A class. And if your family weren't, then your kids were in the B class. And then if your kids were, but but the C class was, uh, which did exist, was much more, uh, were, were kids who had learning problems, you know. But I was in the B class. Uh, my family wasn't influential at all. Um, we weren't rich. We were hardworking people. But, um, but in that class was some <laughs> was some characters actually. Real quick backstory: during those three years I was there, every year for Christmas, you know, we would have to um, would get a budget for, to buy a Christmas gift and to give somebody, you know, in exchange for Christmas gift, you know. And it was all, you know, no one knew who, who you know. You sort of like just you got picked. You know, you, you you put all your stuff in the pile and all the boys got these gifts, all the girls got these gifts, and they just made sure you didn't get the same gift that you had given. Uh, and every year, I, I mean, I, I really love Star Wars and G.I. Joe and all that kind of stuff. So I got these Star Wars characters my mom would buy. And I, I think they were like $4.95, which was quite expensive for us. You know, that was a lot of money. And every year, I got a coloring book that was already colored in. Every year, for three years, I got a coloring book. And I do not know how I managed that for three years that I ended up getting coloring books. I was so let down. I just wanted to just not give a gift. <laughs> I wanted to keep my own gift. But, you know, it's just not the way we did it. Anyway, during that time I met a young guy. There were a number of us. Um, and we... Um, um, but uh, I, I actually... Um, um, during that time, before I get on to some of the characters in my class, I, I remember, well, I can remember some of their names. Um, Jimmy Woodruff, who was my best friend, uh, after, in junior high, not in, in, in elementary school. We, we were friends we, uh, in, in, uh, in, junior, in elementary school, but, you know, um, but not best friends at the time. We were just in the class together, you know. And, um, but there was Van, Van Johnson and friends, I don't remember. I think Franz Williams. I'm not sure. Anyway, I learned basketball because um, no one would play with me. But luckily, all of the uh, the the black boys would play, let me come out there and so they can beat the hell out of me uh, in street ball. So I learned street ball. Um, 
playing 21 and games like that. I mean, I swear, the first year, I got slammed constantly. The second year, I at least got the ball a few times and able to throw the ball towards the goal. And then the, the last year, I was I was even winning some some games. Um, but um, um, I took it on with me into junior high, where I did play junior high ball, but it was still that class thing, you know, going on. So unless your parents, you know, unless your dad was a preacher or or the own business owner or or whatever, you you did get to play. You got to suit up, but you didn't get to play. Anyway, um, we uh, but in my junior high year, um, there was a group of us and um, through Jimmy that uh, we got into Dungeons and Dragons D and D. And we had this big invite to go out to where Jimmy lived at, which was on a place called Iat Lake. At, at um, his grandfather's name's Nolan Woodruff, and I'm trying to remember the name of the landing there. It was named after his uncle, his, his grandfather's brother. Anyway, um, who who and it was all the family there. So anyway, Jimmy lived out there with his little brother Wade, and his mom was out there. But they primarily lived with his grandparents, um, and. Um, but we went out there. I went out there one weekend, and we stayed in the camp. It was just, it was just the boys were on the table playing Dungeons and Dragons. Um, it was really wet and dark out there at that time. Uh, but it was just a, it opened my eyes up to a completely different thing, you know. The, the, but not just Dungeons and Dragons, but a friendship with Jimmy, and that friendship lasted all through through high school. And even though so I lived, but I lived further away from all my high school friends that I did from a Jimmy. So the weekends, he and I hung out together and we would fish every weekend. Um, we were out there together. We would do stuff called yo-yoing. We would hunt for alligators. <laughs> we would uh, squirrel hunt, um, a duck hunt together, everything. We did it all, you know, and we did a lot of, uh, you know, camping and uh, everything you can imagine. I remember one weekend we were, um, we were yo-yoing and I remember it so well because um, we had a fire at the landing and we just had blankets. We didn't have sleeping bags or camping gear and we had a radio. And this radio could only tune into one station. It was a new station that just came online and they were playing one song for 24 hours a day. For 24 hours, the first 24 hours. And it was, um, they're coming to take me away. Ho ho, they're coming to take me away. Ha ha, he he, ho ho, to the funny farm. And this was 24 hours. <laughs> but anyway... We had our boat there, our flat bottom boat, and uh, we'd put out like a dozen yo-yos that night and put the shiners out and we had the fire going and we'd eaten something at his mom, his grandparents' house and we came out and, and we're sleeping and we were going to get up early and go check our yo-yos a couple of times. Well, I remember it was quite cold out, but we were next to the fire and the fire was just roaring. And I remember waking up and looking down by my feet and just from the off the bank of the, the lake was a big old alligator, and he was sitting there facing the fire, just taking in the heat. And I remember looking at that thinking, huh, and then I just rolled back over and went to sleep. <laughs> and then when we woke up later to go check our, our you know, check our, 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 our lines, he was gone, you know. So we got in the boat, and then we, uh, we traveled around the, the, uh, the boat roads, just kind of stuff together, checking all of our lines bringing in the catfish and uh, the next morning of course when you get in you find you bring you bring your you leave your yo-yos out but you you know you um, take all your bait back in and you you because uh, you don't want to catch anything um, during the day I mean, first of all it's just not nice you know all these fish hanging around dead and plus the fish you'd catch would be gar or, or something that you really didn't want to eat you know but uh, we caught a big mess of catfish that night that morning we cleaned them and um, it took us a good while to do that and then uh they either got frozen or her, his his grandma cooked them up for us. I think I brought some, even brought some home with me, but um, just it was weekends like that, you know. One time we were playing BB gun wars and I shot him right here, um, and it went in. And I took a magnet and got it out, <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then we took some uh, took a band aid put over it, and that was it, you know. Well, Jim and I were good friends throughout through high school and that kind of stuff, and. Um, in the end, um, I joined the army and moved on, and um, and never heard from him again. Um, but I had traveled to Louisiana. I want to say my kids, 
probably about 15 years ago, and my kids were little, and um, I had heard that um, uh, his grandmother heard I was home, and his grandfather passed away, but and Jimmy was there. He was actually been working on the railroads, uh, not not on the railroad, but he was he was a carpenter and he was repairing and all of the uh, the wooden structures along the railroad tracks, that kind of stuff. And so just re and he just traveled around doing that. So I remember I, I quickly jumped in the car and went out to see him and um, alone. And the kids didn't want to go, and, and neither did the wife, you know. But uh, And I saw him, and he looked exactly the same way he did when we were in high school. Just wrinkled, but more wrinkles, but that was it from the sun, you know. Looked exactly the same way, same height, everything. I had grown up, I, I, you know, he was shorter than I was. But it was so nice seeing him, you know, so good seeing him, you know. But I was a bit shocked at, uh, you know, at seeing him also. Now, a little backstory on, on Jimmy. Jimmy, um, Jimmy was an alcoholic. And uh, he um, was a, uh, a drug addict also uh, in his earlier days. And I actually drove down to Baton Rouge one time with his grandfather to go get Jimmy. And, um, and then we brought him back home and um, put him in AA. And, um, and he was doing pretty good. Um, but it was just something he just kept falling back into. Well, he apparently beat the drugs. But he was still still doing a lot of drinking and stuff. So anyway, I saw him that day. It was great seeing him. It was just so it was a great time great seeing him, you know. And then um then, you know, after vacation I got home about two weeks later my dad called me and told me that uh Jimmy had been killed. He he was hit by a train, actually. He he'd gotten drunk and, and sat on the tracks, passed out, and the train ran over him. And um Anyway, his brother Wade and I, we're still friends on Facebook, and uh, we talk, well, it's been a long time since I've talked to Wade. Wade has done all kinds of crazy stuff. He's always been the one with the uh, with the brains when it came to uh, everything else, you know, he, and he was a fantastic carpenter, too. He's built houses, that kind of stuff Wade has, and uh, I don't know if his grandmother's still living anymore, but uh, I, I believe she's still, I believe she may still be around, but um, yeah, tough times, tough things happen, and uh I just, yeah, glad I got to see him that, 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 that one last time. Anyway, I have a lot of great memories with him. He's a great guy. We're such good friends. And um, what kills me is that I've met lots of guys like that, you know. You know, I'm, I'm a straight guy who likes to hang out with, with guys. You know, I like I like being around men, you know, and he was a good guy. He had his flaws just like we all do, you know. And I've got lots of friends like that that I've lost over the years. Um and it's just it it, it hurts. And all through that you wonder, why am I still around? You know, what has God got for me, you know? What is he? What is he? What does he got for me? You know, why? Why am I still around? You know, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. Anyway, you're never too old and too big to cry <laughs> over over stuff. You know, and um, I think we honor we honor people by shedding a tear for them, and we uh, and remembering them. And telling a piece of their story, you know. Um, <laughs> oh, Jimmy and I, we used to do some crazy stuff together. I do still remember, though, that one night um, we went out one time. And I was on leave or something like that. And um, we went down to Alexandria. And uh, um, we went to some club or something like that, some bar. And, um, you know, to, to 
he wasn't going to have anything. He didn't drink anything or anything like that. But when he got close to me, I could smell it on him. He had found he found the one guy in the entire place who had marijuana on him, and he got high. You know, I remember just driving back home, and he just could not figure out how I, who never did anything, no drugs or anything like that, could um, could be so high in life, and at how he felt that he needed it. D needed <laughs> um, drugs so he could feel high. But anyway, um, thank you for listening to my story. And um, um, like I said, this is all just getting it off my chest, you know. And uh, um, but if you have, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up and um, and share it if you want to. I don't mind. Um, I got a few more stories to tell you. <laughs> some good, some bad, some funny, some not so funny. But um, anyway, I appreciate you coming to my channel and listening to my story. And uh, you guys have a good day. Bye.